Greetings, travelers. I am Gideon Ironheart, your guide through the realms of mythical creatures and monsters. Today, we turn our attention to mythical creatures related to winter, unraveling their secrets and lore. So, gather round the hearth at the mythical mug tavern and let the tales begin. A creature that sends shivers down the spines of those who've dared to tread the icy expanses, the Mahaha, a maniacal demon of the Arctic. Picture a sinewy figure, ice blue and frigid to the touch, with eyes as white as the snow it haunts. The Mahaha is a creature of paradoxes, barefoot in the freezing cold, clad in almost no clothing, yet untouched by the chill. It carries an eternal smile, concealed beneath stringy hair that falls across its face. A creature of strength, it relishes in sadistic delight, its long, bony fingers adorned with sharp, vicious nails that bring about a chilling demise. This cold demon finds amusement in tickling its victims to death. The aftermath reveals a haunting sight. Lifeless faces etched with a twisted, frozen smile, the mark of the Mahaha's lethal caress. But fear not, for tales often end with a twist. The Mahaha, for all its strength and malevolence, harbors a peculiar weakness. It is easily fooled. Legends abound with stories of clever souls outwitting this demon, tricking it into a watery demise. Imagine, if you will, the Mahaha leaning over a waterhole, only to be sent cascading into the currents by a well-executed ruse. And so, dear patrons, should you find yourself facing this icy menace alone, remember this piece of sage advice. Invite the Mahaha for one last drink by the waterhole. As it leans in for its sinister delight, a gentle push can send it on a one-way journey downstream. Yukiyona is a spirit that haunts the wintry landscapes of Japanese folklore. The origins of Yukiyona trace back to the Muromachi period, with tales already circulating in Sogi Shokoku Monogatari. This ethereal being manifests on snowy nights as a tall, enchanting woman with flowing black hair and blue lips. Her otherworldly presence is enhanced by inhumanly pale or transparent skin, allowing her to seamlessly blend into the snow-covered terrain. Adorned in a white kimono, or sometimes described as nude, with only her face and hair visible against the snow, Yukiyona's eyes strike terror into mortals despite her supernatural beauty. A haunting characteristic is her ability to traverse the snow without leaving footprints, and she can transform into mist or snow when threatened, proving her elusive nature. Legends surrounding Yukiyona often depict her as both serene and ruthless. Some tales suggest she is the spirit of one who perished in the snow, while others portray her as a malevolent force associated with winter and snowstorms. Until the 18th century, she was consistently depicted as evil, but contemporary stories often emphasize her ghost-like nature and ephemeral beauty. Encounters with Yukiyona typically occur during snowstorms, where she uses her icy breath to transform travelers into frost-coated corpses or leads them astray to succumb to exposure. In some versions, she appears holding a child, freezing anyone who attempts to rescue the seemingly innocent babe. She might also invade homes, using the wind to kill residents in their sleep. Yukiyona's motives vary, from a mere desire to witness death to more vampiric tendencies of draining blood or life force. She may even take on a succubus-like role, preying on weak-willed men through intimate encounters. Yet, amidst the icy cruelty, there is a softer side. In some legends, she releases would-be victims for reasons ranging from their beauty to promises made. Next, we delve into the chilling realms of Algonquin folklore, where the shadows whisper tales of the Chinu, a creature as formidable as it is unsettling. The Chinu, born from the twisted strands of dark magic, were once human, 
corrupted and cursed by forces beyond mortal comprehension. Legend has it that a rejection of romantic advances could lead to transformation as vengeance-fueled hearts sought the transformation into these cannibalistic ice giants. Picture a haggard old man with wolfish eyes, stark naked, his shoulders and lips gnawed away in the madness of insatiable hunger. Described as larger than the average man, the Chinoo's size escalates with their hunger, their fangs standing out prominently against lips that have been mercilessly chewed off. The curse forces them into an existence of perpetual warmth, pushing them to seek refuge in the cold embrace of snow-covered landscapes. The Chinoo, fueled by a ravenous appetite for human flesh, boasts formidable strength. Their resistance to the biting cold is unnerving, making them adept hunters in icy terrains. In battles, they tap into an unnatural vigor that, coupled with their sheer size, renders them formidable adversaries. To dispatch a Chinoo, one must either dismantle their icy heart or resort to cunning tactics. Various accounts suggest chopping their bodies into multiple pieces or coaxing them into consuming salt, an act that leads to the destruction of their icy core, effectively ending their cursed existence. Now, a tale of chilling terror from the frostbitten realms of the Arctic Circle. Behold the Ikutayuk, a sinister specter known as the One Who Drills. Born from the depths of icy desolation, this creature haunts the frozen tundra, a remnant of a time long past. The origins of the Ikutayuk trace back to the ancient tales of the First People. It is said that this murderous monster once prowled the Arctic wastes, a malevolent force preying on unsuspecting souls. Legend has it that a heroic figure of old faced this creature and with great sacrifice managed to slay the terror. The brother, nameless and elusive, escaped into the shadows, never to be seen again. The Ikutayuk manifests as a female entity, a creature of bone-chilling beauty that conceals its true nature. The Ikutayuk lures victims to an icy ritual circle where her brother restrains them as she drills into their bodies until death. The remains are entombed beneath the frozen spires, a grim testament to the creature's malevolence. Next, we delve into the shadows of the Inuit folklore to unravel the mystery of the Ijirak, the elusive shape-shifting tricksters that dance on the edge of two worlds. This creature, with roots buried deep in the Inuit religion, weaves a tapestry of deception and danger, lurking in the corners of perception. The name Ijirak, resonating with the ominous tone of a shapeshifter, speaks volumes about the nature of this enigmatic being. In the North Baffin dialect, it means shapeshifter, and true to its name, an Ijirak can assume any form it desires. Picture this a creature that can materialize as anything, from a shadowy caribou to a half-man, half-caribou monster. A master of disguise indeed, but be wary. Their eyes, like burning embers, remain a telltale sign of their true identity. In the realm where Ijirak roam, the line between reality and illusion blurs. Those who ventured into their cursed domain report fleeting glimpses, catching the Ijirak out of the corner of their eye. Yet, when one attempts a direct gaze, the creature slips away, leaving nothing but uncertainty in its wake. A dance of shadows, a play of deception, sometimes offering aid, sometimes leading astray, the Ijirak embodies the capricious nature of the mythical. The law surrounding the Ijirak suggests a peculiar origin, trapped between the worlds of the living and the dead. Some Inuit, driven by the pursuit of game, went too far north, becoming entangled in this liminal space. The result? A transformation into the Ijirak, creatures dwelling in the space between realms. This belief, echoed by elders in the South Baffin region, paints the extreme northern Inuit as potential bearers of these shapeshifters, 
evoking caution and fear among the wary. Now let's talk about the frosty realms of the Barbagazi, those elusive gnomes that dance on the snowy peaks of the Alps. The name itself, a corruption of barb glacé, or frozen beards, speaks to the icy demeanor of these mountain dwellers. The Barbagazi make their homes in secret networks of caves and tunnels cunningly concealed near the mountain peaks. These beings, unlike your garden variety gnome, are masters of survival in the harshest of environments. The Barbagazi thrive exclusively in the coldest climates, making their seasonal appearances during the winter when the blizzards rage and the mountains wear their snowy crowns. They are renowned for their peculiar habit of hibernating during the summer months, emerging like frosty spectres when the first snowflakes start to fall. It's said they take delight in riding the cascading walls of snow, showcasing both their agility and their, dare I say, peculiar sense of enjoyment. However, do not underestimate these gnome-like creatures, for they possess a remarkable ability to burrow through thick snow with astonishing speed, whether it be for play or necessity. These Barbagazi are akin to gnomes with an added touch of frost. Their large feet, not just for show, double as skis or snowshoes, allowing them to traverse the snow-covered mountains with unparalleled ease. As the legends tell, their hair and beards resemble thick icicles, a sight to behold. Yet, when the icy facade melts away, it reveals a more conventional, if not somewhat comical, tuft of hair beneath. Cloaked in a jumpsuit of white fur, they are masters of camouflage amidst the snowy landscapes. Now let's focus our attention to the elusive and formidable creature that roams the heights of the Himalayas, the Yeti, also known as the Abominable Snowman. The roots of the Yeti's legend are entwined with the rich tapestry of Himalayan cultures. Sherpa folklore and misidentifications of local fauna, such as bears or yaks, have contributed to the creation of this mythical beast. Similar to its North American cousin Bigfoot, the Yeti has captivated the minds of those who seek the unknown and the untamed. Picture a creature of grandeur, a large, bipedal, ape-like being, its body cloaked in fur of brown, grey, or even white. Tales speak of its fearsome visage, occasionally depicted with large, sharp teeth that add to the terror it instills in those who cross its path. Tibetan lore further embellishes the legend, introducing three distinct yeti varieties. The Nyalmo, the largest and fiercest of the trio, boasts black fur and towers at a staggering 15 feet. The Chuti, dwelling at elevations between 8,000 to 10,000 feet, stands at 8 feet tall, a sentinel of the high-altitude realms. Last but not least, the Rangshim Bombo, a more diminutive cousin, possesses reddish-brown fur and measures a modest 3 to 5 feet in stature. The Yeti, with its colossal size and formidable appearance, commands an imposing presence in the treacherous Himalayan terrain. Its shaggy fur provides excellent insulation against the biting cold of its high-altitude habitat, rendering it a master of survival in harsh climates. Reports suggest a certain elusive nature. Swift and cunning, it can disappear into the mountainous landscape with surprising agility. Legends tell of titanic beasts banished beneath the earth by wise shamans, a fate earned by their immense power and size. The Kogupuk, veiled in mystery, emerges only during winter, shunning the sun's rays that prove fatal to its existence. This colossal mammal, akin to tusked muskrats in depictions, harbors a paradoxical existence. Tales paint a vivid picture of toothy grins and exposed intestines, though the details of such a sight are as elusive as the creature itself. Some renditions suggest that sunlight touching their skin leads to a swift demise, leaving behind bleached bones in the unforgiving radiance. 
Other accounts narrate a grim fate as the very air becomes a lethal toxin, snuffing out their life with every breath. Origins of these stories intertwine with the discovery of mammoth skeletons poking through the icy earth, suggesting that the Kogupuk might be a folk memory of these ancient giants. Whether born from mammoth remnants or whispers of long-lost creatures, the myths endure, woven into the fabric of Inuit lore. Jack Frost is a creature of winter's grasp, a personification of frosty whims and seasonal magic. Imagine Jack Frost as a sprite-like entity, a whimsical harbinger of winter's chill. His antics range from the mischievous to the heroic, painting autumnal foliage in hues of red, yellow, brown, and orange. In the quiet of a cold winter morning, he's known to leave behind intricate fern-like patterns on windows, a testament to his frosty touch. Jack Frost draws strength from the very essence of winter. His mastery over frost, ice and snow allows him to weave intricate patterns on surfaces and nip at extremities in the coldest of weather. The tales of his exploits have echoed through literature, songs, and even found a place on the silver screen. Jack Frost is not the sole winter entity in the folklore pantheon. In Russia, he takes on a different form as Grandfather Frost, while in Germany, Mrs. Holler presides over winter's wonders. The Hindu Kush mountains draw parallels with England's Jack Frost through tales of a giant guardian with frosty inclinations. And there you have it, fellow travelers, another chapter in our endless pursuit of knowledge and adventure. If you enjoyed our exploration of mythical creatures related to winter, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video, and may your path be ever illuminated by the light of truth. Until next time, this is Gideon Ironheart, signing off from the Mythical Mug Tavern. Safe travels, my friends.